Oh, it was it was it was a lot of improvement. You know, you look at the first you know the first four drives. Um, we we established some rhythm. Uh, we're able to to put together long drives, um, establish the run game, protected the quarterback well. Uh, so just you know, communication was good. Uh, playing with tempo, playing fast. Uh, so just you know, just looking like you know where where we expected to be. You know, coming out the gate. But uh, but each week you gotta you gotta get better. And there's still some things to to clean up. Some technical things that we can do uh, a little bit better. Uh, got to be more disciplined. Had some discipline uh, penalties with the false starts. You know that we got that we got to clean up. Uh, the turnovers. You know, definitely got to improve. Got to improve there. Um, and just keep, you know, just keep getting better. We missed some open receivers, you know, which is just some some timing and some and some fundamental things that we got to work through. Uh, but overall, pleased with, you know, how the guys came out, how they responded. Um, had a good week of practice, and uh, and it showed. You know, they've they've they're, you know, they're doing their job, you know, for the most part. And and you know, the other day it was it was a it was a game where we were trying to establish the run game. Um, um, get some, get some of the receivers going, and you know had some had some called uh, call plays to the tight ends, and just didn't match it up with the right with the right coverage. But you know I think they continue to do their job, still challenging those guys to to create more of a physical presence in the run game. Um, you know they're making their blocks, they're executing their blocks, but we can be you know more fundamentally and technically sound uh, in what we're doing. Uh, they've they provided great leadership. You know they've been really really positive. Uh, throughout the uh, you know throughout the uh, the course of camp and in the early part of the season, so uh, pleased with, with with where we are, but but still trying to to strain and push these guys you know to be a little bit better um, and reach their reach their full potential. Do you think teams are like I, I know y'all used a good bit last year, a little fake pitch over the middle. You feel like teams are doing it better. I think you try to make plays against Georgia. Are teams trying to take away that middle of the field? Um, you feel like with the Titans? You know, uh, it's, I think it's too early to tell because uh, we actually that's what we hit Davis on. You know, it was it was the same. It was the pl same play action. Uh, so we got to do a good job of, of making sure we protect it. You know, with our with our run. You know, so our run looks very similar. And then trying to find, you know, the right situations, the right uh, the right down and distance, right field zone uh, to get that to get that called in. And then sometimes, you know, we may have it on. And if we feel like we got pressure, then we have to we have to check out of it. So. So I, I think it's too early to tell. We're still going to try and incorporate it, you know, because I think it protects our run game, uh, and then it also provides an opportunity to get that ball, you know, over the middle. And then we had a couple of other, uh, not not the same action, but we had a couple of other uh, situations where we were trying to, and and uh, and I think in the field zone, you know, they played uh, they played a little bit of cheat coverage that uh, that took it away, but that resulted in, you know, the great thing about it is when we have that play call, we're going to have other answers, and that's what resulted in uh, in the first touchdown to um, uh, to Ross there. Get the corner ball because mm -hmm. the, they kind of cheated the backside safety to the tight end, took it away. DJ did a good job of recognizing it, went to his next progression and found, uh, found Jay Ross. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing any separation in the running game from anybody coming out of you feel like they're still? You know, we, 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 we still got We still got to keep working at it. You know, it was good to get those guys some touches uh, and give them, give them an opportunity. And I thought they, uh, thought they, they, they ran hard. I uh, thought they did a good job of, for the most part, of, of, of finding, the, uh, finding the creases. Uh, offensive line did a good job of creating some holes for them. Uh, but I think it's too early to tell, you know, if there's if they're separation yet. Uh, but those guys, you know, those guys made the most of their opportunities. And we got to build off of that, build off the confidence that we established uh, running the football and see can we carry that forward uh, week to week. Tony, you got a conference opener. Yep. Obviously, what do you know about Georgia Tech's defense? They're going to play hard. You know they're playing hard. They're 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 deep on the defensive line. I think I've seen maybe you know eight guys you know that are getting in on the rotation. You know 42, uh, you know per the PFF stats, you know has one of the highest uh, pressure rates you know in the country. He does a good job. Plays really hard. You can tell he's kind of there. Him and 95 look like they're the heart and soul of that of that of that defense. Linebacker, you know they they got some guys that have played, but but they also got a, a, a grad transfer in from Maryland. Uh, that looks like he's a good player. I, don't, I think he's played every snap so far this season. I don't think he's come off the field. Uh, so they got some depth at linebacker as well. And then they're they're big. They're big and physical in the secondary. And uh, three of those guys, really, you could say four of them, but three of them are returning starters. And uh, and the other guys played a lot of football. And he's a versatile guy that can play corner, play nickel Sam for him. So, and then I know Thacker's going to do a great job. You know, they're they uh, they they're bringing five just about 50% of the time. So they're going to put some pressure on you. Uh, they're going to try and stop the run, uh, and then see can you see can you throw the football. And that's kind of the situation last year. I thought they did a good job, had a good plan, you know, trying to stop the run, and we were able to hit some big plays in the uh, in the passing game. But for us going into it, we want to be more balanced. You know, this year we want to we want to be able to, you know, to combat what they're doing in the run game, um, have some answers, but at the same time too, make sure that we 
are fundamentally and technically sound in the run, in the run game, so we can establish that. But they're going to play hard. Uh, you know that uh, you know they've created a lot of energy. You know from a recruiting standpoint uh, down there. Um, you know last week's game. You know not a great crossover game for us because Kennesaw is is triple option. Uh, but you can tell that those guys those guys play hard and they enjoy playing for for their coaches. And we're going to get their best. You know they're going to come in here excited to play. Right. I, you know, you know, I have because I've been, you know, a part of his a part of his life. But at the same time, too, you know, CJ uh, has to establish the culture in that room. And, and really, the biggest thing is just accountability and communication uh, between the two. And I remember when I first came in, you know, I had Mike Bellamy, I had DeMont Bice and, you know, Ellington was an older guy, had Hot Rod. And, and I had to establish, you know, you know, the uh, the dominant role in that room. And, and obviously, Ellington had been here for, for a while and not saying that we butted heads, but we had, you know, we had to get on the same page. You know, he had to understand what my coaching style is, and that's that's what you're going through there. Um, and, and obviously, Lin Jay's been he's been used to me, uh, and now he's just getting getting used to uh, to Spiller. But y'all know Spiller, y'all know the character that he has, and, and how he's going to establish you know the the hierarchy in that room. Um, and, and any of us that are in a uh, a situation where you got a chain of command, you know, you gotta you gotta respect the chain of command and do things you know according to how the person that's leading the room uh, sets it. So it's really more just accountability and communication between the two, um, and they're working through it. Uh, but it's but you know our program too. I mean that's that's what the foundation of our program is. You know accountability. That first play of the game, it seemed like he, he made yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, Lin, there's no question about the type of player that Lin Jay is. I mean, Lin Jay's made a bunch of plays, you know, for us in this in this program. And uh, biggest thing is just getting on the same page, you know, with his coach and the things that his coach is asking him to do. Uh, just for and it's not necessarily football stuff. It's it's the total it's the total package. And I think that you know that's been illustrated in our program. You know that it's 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 everything matters. You know if you're going to be the uh, if you're going to be the lead guy or the first guy that runs out there. You know, uh, Braden. What, what you're seeing is is Braden is 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 more aggressive. You know, and he's trying he's trying to transition the uh, the technique. You know, I've tried to change a couple things with with the strike technique, which is going to take him just just some repetition. Uh, you know, but he's showing a, a, a willingness. Um, you know, he, there's probably a couple of plays in the game he wants to wants to get back, but he's cutting he's cutting his guys off when we need him to cut them off. And I just want to really work on his hand placement. You know, his forward lean, things of uh, things of that nature. And then Davis. You know, I've, I've seen tremendous progress in Davis and just his his. Uh, his confidence when he runs routes, you know, especially especially change of direction and redirecting on the run. You're starting to see that his eyes uh, are able to talk to his feet, you know, and now the next piece is once my eyes can talk to my feet, they can talk to my hands at the same time. And then anybody that's played, you know, the receiver position from that from that standpoint, it just takes repetition. And, and once you have that repetition and you have success doing it, then it builds the confidence. So that's what I've seen there. And that's the same thing in the in the run game, especially when I'm trying to change a little bit of, of some of the uh, some of the hand placements and the way we're fitting things uh, with those guys. How do you evaluate DJ's touch? You know, there were a couple of throws. Uh, you know, I think he fell off of a couple of those, especially on the move. You know, he fell off that one, especially the one that he missed to Ross. You know, he just kind of he just kind of fell away from it. Um, he was high on the on the on the bangle screen that we had. Um, so, so he's he just got to work through it. You know, and I think a, a lot of it is too is is in game action. You know, in game action, you got to work through uh, work through that. Is that mainly footwork? Or you know, there's some there's some there's some footwork things that you got that that he has to work on, especially on the on the move. You know, making sure that he's that he's he's following through on his throw, not leaning away. Um, and Coach Streeter and him will go to work on it. But but I'll say this about DJ, man, he improved. You know, I thought he improved, especially uh, especially in the pocket. You know, there was one there was one that uh, that he was forced to flush early, uh, the one that he had the big play to Ross, uh, where where our, our right tackle gave up a little bit of pressure early, uh, got him hurried. And then there was another one I wanted him to step up in the in the pocket, but he got flushed a little bit uh, and had to move. But overall, I thought he I thought he had a better better pocket presence uh, this week than he did the previous week. Um, and so that's all we're asking him to do is just get better every single week. Kind of 
I think everybody's, you know, especially inside the program, but I think a lot of people that have seen him play uh, understand how talented this young man is. Uh, but also, too, is this is what fourth game starting, you know, and so he's got to he's got to go through some 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 growing pains, uh, so to speak. And, uh, and and in fairness to him, sometimes he gets compared to a guy uh, that, that was here for several years, but he gets compared to, compared to him at the end of his career. You know, and that's that's tough on a that's tough on a young guy. But DJ's made of the right stuff, uh, and and uh, his ceiling is extremely high. Uh, but you know, you got to make steps to get to your ceiling, uh, to be able to play consistently. You know, uh, towards the towards the top of your potential. Uh, and and he, and and a great thing about him is he responded, and, and everybody responded. It was a tough week, and they had a decision to make. You know, could they did they uh, were they going to pout and feel sorry for themselves and say what was me, or were they going to go back to work? Um, and and I think what you saw is, is an offense that went back to work and took pride in, in their job and and now hopefully with some success you know it'll breed you know more you know you know more focus and consistency in practice so that they can perform well uh, on Saturdays. Did you have any conversations with him? Again, you're preparing him for Trevor Lawrence. Everybody else is preparing him mm-hmm. for Trevor Lawrence, and that's a big thing. And he's a five-star recruit. And these huge expectations. You go out in week one. Yep. Yeah, just block out, block out the noise. You know, focus on focus on what you can control, and 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 just be you, and and don't worry about what people on the uh, on the outside say. You know, just just focus on on the people that, that that you trust to take advice from. That's the only one that you need to worry about taking criticism from. Um, and I think that's a, a Morgan Freeman quote that that we've that we've showed the guys, and and that's just the mindset that you got to have. And and I think you see or saw, you know, the the kind of young man that he is and how he responded. You know, and and, and, be, and the best thing about DJ is he's going to be his hardest critic. You know, he's going to take ownership, um, and he understands that that there's a process, and, and he has to trust the process and go through the process, you know, day in and day out. And then eventually, like I said, he'll make, keep making those steps and be able to play, you know, up to his uh, up to his full potential. You know, the, the message to the players is, man, don't listen to the noise. You know, don't listen to what's going on, you know, outside of outside of our building. And we have that, you know, that, that very thing, embrace the target, you know, displayed, you know, in specific spots in the building. And we've had that for several years. So, so we understand from a DNA and a program standpoint, you know, that we're always going to have a target on our back. So I, so I don't know if it's necessarily comparing us to, to other teams, but it's really just this is, this, is the, this is what you signed up for when you came to Clemson. You know, it's understood that, hey, we're always going to get everybody's best, right? We're always going to have high expectations. You wouldn't want it any, any other way, right? But with that, too, is if you don't live up to the expectations, then obviously there's going to be criticism, and that's when we just stay in a submarine, focus on what we can control, and then, then at the end, and really all you really care about is, is, is what happens at the end of the season and what people are saying when it's, when it's all said and done. Coach, how hard would it be to totally change an offensive philosophy like Georgia Tech has done the last couple of years? Oh, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be tough because you gotta, you got to recruit to it first and foremost. And, and so you got to find philosophically guys that fit your, fit your culture. And then you also got to find guys that fit your, that fit your scheme. And then you're trying to transition the guys that you have on your roster from an old mentality, an old philosophy to a, to a new philosophy. But from what I can tell, man, they're doing a, they're doing a good job, you know, with, with, uh, with that transition. And it's going to take time. And I think the, the, the expectation is probably going to be unrealistic. I mean, it's going to take several, several years and you got to have a chance to get recruiting, re- get through a couple of recruiting cycles, right. To get, to get, those guys because not only do you have to get them into your program then you got to develop them to to your philosophy so it'd be a, it'd be a tough transition but I know that coach Collins does a great job especially from a recruiting standpoint there's a ton of energy and you're starting to see that you're starting to see the progress take place uh, on the field with the way the guys are playing there's still some option football at smaller levels but it, is it uh, the point now where I mean to recruit and recruit this kind of talent you gotta you gotta change things well we run some option football you know, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, option principles. Uh, it just it, it may not look exactly uh, like a, like a Kennesaw that is a true you know under center triple option, a lot like uh, you know Paul was when uh, when he was there. Uh, but you know, you have to fit. You have to to recruit to what your what your fit is, 
right? Both both personnel and, and philosophy. And and I think that nowadays a lot of the a lot of the skill guys, you know, they don't really know what option uh, is, but they don't like the word option, you know, because they associate it with <laughs> this. You're, you're not going to throw the ball. We're not going to touch the ball. So I think you 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 got to kind of massage it a little bit. Uh, but it really, a lot of the principles are the same because you're always trying to find a way to put certain defenders, you know, on the field in conflict. And really, that's option. You go either or. RPO is option. It's run or pass. It's a, it's, a, it's an option. So, so not as many of the true bone uh, stuff that you've seen in the past. Um, but, but I know that that it's, it presents a challenge. You know, it presents a challenge. Those teams that run it though, they're kind of fun to watch. You know, they're 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 fun to watch. Uh, they're, they're fun to watch when they're rocking and rolling, you know. Say when they're, when they're when they're when they're rocking and rolling, uh, but I, I think that, that what we do, we're, we're fun to watch too. What was the evaluation of Rayburn and some of the other backup uh, linemen who got in there? You know, I thought that uh, that that once we once we subbed, you know, early, uh, they did a good job, especially there right out of the right out of the gate in the, in the second half. You know, I think we left the, the first group in there, went down, scored a touchdown. Then we sub, they went down and scored a touchdown. And then when we started kind of mixing, matching, and putting more guys in the game, lost a, lost a little bit of, uh, of continuity. Obviously, Rayburn did a good job, other than you know he had the one false start uh, penalty, but he played multiple spots too. You know, so he was in there at center, he was in there at tackle. Uh, Tio, you know, Tio, it's going to be a good good learning experience for Tio. Uh, for him uh, to kind of kind of evaluate himself from from a game standpoint, and then be able to go back and say, okay, this is the corrections that I need to make on the practice field, so that trans transitions to the uh, to the game. Man, Pennington got in there in his first play. You know, he was uh, he was good, but then got banged up a little bit. Um, and, and Tristan Lee got in there for about probably about ten plays. You know, did a did a did a good job. Um, so, so please uh, initially with the with the uh, with the substitutions, but then down down the stretch, I don't know if it's fair to, to truly evaluate because you're just trying to give guys an opportunity to get in there and get some get some game experience. Did you think there's a little more cohesion in the starters this week? Uh, with those guys not playing their second game You know, you, you saw that, and 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 obviously four four drives went down to score points, but they were they were long drives, and you know, especially you know when you put together nine ten play drives, you know, defense is counting on you to do what? They're counting on you to get antsy, shoot yourself in the foot, you know, and and, and be able to get off the field. But for those guys to be able to go down, um, I thought the I thought the targeting was was pretty good. Uh, the communication there still a couple of areas for us to for us to grow. Uh, you know, they did a good job of of showing you an initial alignment, and then all of a sudden the linebackers would flip, which which really could could cause some problems from a communication standpoint in the run game. But I thought our guys handled that handled that well. Uh, so you're starting to see that 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 cohesion, uh, and and I don't care who you're playing. Uh, you know, the last the only negative play that we had was the uh, was the fumble snap, well, no, the fumble exchange between uh, Taylor uh, and the running back uh, was only only lost yardage. So so we were staying ahead of the chains. You know, we weren't turning guys loose for the most part. Uh, so so those are the signs that, that let you know that the cohesion is coming together. You know that that's the only that's the only downside to my job is during the camp season. You know I'm off on the field with the tight ends or the running backs, and I don't get to see all the all the quarterbacks and, and pretty wideouts run around. But you know <laughs> that's all that's all they talked about after he came up to camp is just how how electric. And obviously you could watch him on film and you say, man, he's a I mean, he can move. He's a good player. But until you see it in, in person, and then what you what you don't know right is just how tough of, of a young man he is and what you saw on that punt return man he took a shot kept his balance and and, and it didn't phase him you know he was trying to go score so so I think I've uh, I'm gonna take credit for the nickname Maverick because I call him Maverick I call him the young Tom Cruise uh, from uh, from from Top Gun he's kind of got that he's got that that feistiness to him that that edge to him and I think he likes it too but uh but but that's what uh, that's what I didn't know you know about him just because I you know, wasn't wasn't heavily involved in the process. You know, Streeter and uh, and Grisham and, and Jeff kind of handled that uh, for the most part. But man, he's a he provides a spark, and, and and what I think he's done too is he's he's garnered the respect of everybody in that locker room. You know, obviously probably tough for him too. He's coming in as a baseball guy, you know, football guy. You know, could have been a you know top 10, 15 pick, you know, in baseball. But wants here to come, wants to come play football, then it's like okay, you kind of know your path is like we're gonna start you at quarterback and then possibly transition to to wide out. So. You know, he kind of came in the door, you know, with some with some some challenges to overcome in the locker room. But man, he he immediately, you know, dispelled all that kind of stuff and showed the guys, hey, man, I'm a football player. I'm one of the guys, uh, and I'll do whatever it takes. It's really hard to come in, like as a, I guess, in the summer as a freshman and be a 
part of the offense right away. Just went, at what point did you kind of realize that he had a chance to do that? You know, day one, just watching him, watching him run around. And then just the conversations that you hear throughout the summer of the players, you know, giving reports on, uh, on, how, on how well he's doing. Uh, matter, but just cool. you see him track that punt? Oh man, that was that's that's pretty that's pretty special. Uh, you can tell he's got some baseball in his background. Yep. Dallas said he still kind of had a. Am I really going to do this moment leading into Georgia? Did you have any of that? Like, are we actually going to do this and throw him out here in Georgia, or were you ready to roll? I was ready to roll. You know, what coach said, hey, let's let's make sure we got got something ready for him. And I said, I agree with you. Uh, but he has showed that he has showed that throughout the course of of practice. You could just tell. That, that he has that he has that presence to him that the moment is not not too big and he's a quarterback so he's used to touching the ball you know every single every single snap talking about will will Taylor uh, just uh he's blue he's blue collar you know he's blue collar he'll do whatever it takes he's like okay you want me to go catch a punt man give me a pair of gloves I'm gonna go catch a punt all right you want me to go in here and and uh and, and play quarterback you know in, in in the package that we got man I'll do it so so just an unselfishness especially from a guy as I said that was coming in the door like you're talking about a uh, you know a very very high profile guy in in a sport where you know he made a decision you know, to come to come be a part of our program, and we're very grateful for that. So, and then he's just he's just an awesome young man too. He's always got a smile, you know, on his on his face. You, you see him interacting and engaging with everybody, you know, on the on the team. Uh, so he's just a, he's just a one of the guys, blue collar mentality. And he's got a great spirit about himself. Tony, you talk about Will engaging mm -hmm. with everybody on the team. Was that a challenge you and the coaches had to think about coming to this season with sixty year guys who might be twenty three and twenty four and guys who were giving up their last year in high school or last half year in high school, 17-year-olds, and bringing them all together in the same place and having them get along. I know I hadn't given much yeah. thought to that. That may yeah. be a coach more, I mean, a question more so for Coach Sweeney, but mm -hmm. I think the, the, the environment that we have in the culture, I mean, the culture and environment we have in the locker room, and, and you know, Coach established that from day one, that, that you're going to embrace the freshmen. Right, these guys are part of our program. Right, they're part of the brotherhood. Let's bring them in, put our arms around them, right, and let's help these guys make the transition. Whereas it might not have been the same way when I was when I was coming up. You know, freshman, you kind of, you know, you had to, you had to, <laughs> you had to earn your uh, earn your right of passage in the uh, in the locker room. And yeah. and uh, and I think that that there's some some value to that. But I think there's a whole lot more value when you when you bring those guys in and then you you challenge your, your leadership and your older guys to help them with the transition because you remind the older guys man you remember what it was like you know to to, to make that transition especially if you're a mid-year guy coming and coming to school early let's help let's help these young men because you wanted to be helped we provided you help and now you have the responsibility to help these guys uh, transition you haven't seen any issues about this age spread right about the age spread no and, and i think a lot of it is too the type of young men you know, I think all of them, you know, are, are similar minded in, in where they're trying to go uh, in life. And so there's obviously an instant connection there uh, because they, they have the same value uh, system, so to speak. Uh, and it makes it makes an easy transition. Tony, are y'all still trying to find that horizontal Amari type threat that defenses have to honor on, on a lot of the jet stuff? You know, I think that the, the, the two games, uh, may not have provided as much opportunity for that. Uh, obviously, this past game, it was more a let's establish the, the downhill run. Uh, and as we go as we go forward, we'll find we'll find more ways to to pick some of that up. And then also, too, I think you've seen we've uh, you know, we, we've made a commitment to to hand the ball to the backs and get them to the outside. You know, so that has kind of supplemented some of the, you know, some of the jet sweep stuff we've done in the past, uh, because a lot of our a lot of our base run was between the tackles downhill, you know, two back oriented. And then we would use that as a supplement to get the ball on the outside. But, you know, as we've as we progressed, defenses have progressed, you know, we've had to kind of kind of transition some of that to to more of our outside run game. And I thought we did a good job with the, uh, with the opportunities that we had uh, this past week of, of, of trying to get the ball on the edge. Mm -hmm. With so many receivers, are there any guys that maybe haven't gotten as many opportunities as you would like yet that you want to see get more involved? You know, we try to be intentional with that and making sure that we get guys you know, involved in the game 
um, get get the ball in their hand. Uh, the great thing about you know our culture and our environment is guys are unselfish. You know, even though they may you know want more touches, you know they're going they're going to focus on how they can impact the game on every single play. And then us as coaches, it's our job you know, to make sure that we're intentional, and we're mindful. And so there's always communication throughout the game of hey, let's make sure we try to get this guy involved and get get the ball in his hand and and and, uh, and get him going. And then that's going to kind of keep them engaged and focused and and uh, and committed and competing because we're going to need all those guys uh, down the stretch. Right. I mean, whatever run game you have, whether it's inside run or outside run, you know, you're going to have to protect it with, with different different aspects of your offense in the passing game. And so so for us, as we establish the run, it's going to open up your your, your move the pocket type of stuff. It's going to open up your you know, some more your RPO stuff. It's going to open up your play action to put the ball, you know, down the field. Uh, and we want we want to try and stay try, try and stay aggressive, stay balanced. You know, we we're able to get a couple balls, you know, down the field. You know, we, we took a couple shots in the, in the Georgia game as well, trying to get the ball down the field. And that's just a core philosophy for us, too. And just an aggressive mindset that we have. of Let's try to get the ball down the field, you know, a couple times, uh, even if it's incomplete, you know, at least back those guys up and, and let them know that we'll, you know, we'll, we'll drop back and, and try and throw, throw it over your head. All right. Anything from anybody on Zoom? I forgot about Zoom folks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wide receivers maybe needing to be a little bit better. Is that just a fundamental thing? I, I can't imagine it's an effort thing. It's more technique. Oh, it's all it's it's all technique and and really uh, perimeter blocking uh, in the uh, in the receiver world is is all about want to you know there's there's some there's some technique but sometimes it's want to and I think also just understanding um, and, and I know that one guy that we've been challenging is Bo and and, and a lot of it is just inexperience you know just just the speed of the game happening so fast adjustment to to the different looks. Uh, so, so it's a combination of a, of a couple things, uh, inexperience, but definitely not uh, a lack of effort. Um, those guys are, you know, they're trying. Go, Coach Grisham, y'all know how Coach Grisham played. You know what his expectations are. Uh, a lot of it is just just post snap recognition, anticipation, timing, and then then just whatever you know fundamentally we can do with our with our hands. And we had a couple of couple of penalties where we got our hands outside where we need to get our hands inside. Uh, that's one of the fundamental things we can do. We can do a little bit better, but it's definitely not a, not a lack of effort. Hey, coaches, Trevor from CTigers.com. Uh, speaking of blocking, uh, are you pleased with uh, where Pace and Chip we are with their pass protection right now? You know, so far, uh, so far, I think early on in the in the in this last game. Um, you know, Sacramento State came out, brought a little bit of pressure, uh, and then once we were able to pick it up, I think they kind of backed off of that. So they didn't get challenged as as much uh, as the previous as the previous week. Uh, but both of them are, are willing blockers. You know, they're they're strong at the point of attack. They got they got good punch. Uh, just uh, you know, as we go forward, it's just going to be the discipline and the consistency in their in their eyes and their recognition. Because Georgia Tech's going to bring going to bring pressure. They're going to challenge you. They're going to blitz the back. They're going to blitz away from the back. They're going to be secondary guys. Uh, so this is going to be a good a good challenge for. Uh, for those guys. Anything else? All right, thank you. Coach.